Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As ladies and gentlemen, today we'll be discussing what will happen with XRP if Trump wins. Because it has been a major question. Quite a lot of people have been asking me about what role will potential political change do for XRP. But first, before I get into that, I want to get into this. Some of the best advice I wish I learned when I was much younger. Procrastination kills more dreams than failure does. Your goal is to just do all the things you want to do. Procrastination is rooted in fear of failure, self-belief, a perfectionism mindset, absence of clear goals, and effective time planning. Succumbing to distractions, overestimating available time, anxiety from expectations, overwhelming from the complexity of tasks, lacking the skills, absence from personal relevance in the task, and favoring immediate rewards over long-term benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, helping you get over procrastination is one of the things I highly recommend you do and I want to help with. There are plenty of people sitting on multi-million dollar ideas and goals and haven't started yet, but have wanted to maybe for years. And all I'll say is if I didn't believe... And if I kept procrastinating on my dreams, I wouldn't be where I am today. Guys, stay the course, pay attention, and act on your goals. And part of the reason I brought that up to introduce this video for the day is because, quite frankly, people are procrastinating on XRP, not learning enough about the ecosystem, not learning enough about the fundamentals. Only because of price. People are procrastinating to buy more XRP because the price hasn't moved yet. It has been suppressed. But the reason I can't allow you to procrastinate on XRP is because once the price begins to show what it's about to do, it's unattainable as an entry point anymore. Right now, we are at record low sentiment levels for XRP. Sentiment which is similar to how it was when the SEC first sued Ripple. Ripple sells XRP people, bitch. Ripple buys XRP people, bitch. If Ripple gives a grant, people complain. If Ripple doesn't give a grant, people complain. Brad or David Schwartz tweet, people complain. Brad or David don't tweet enough, people, bitch. XRP goes down, people, bitch. XRP doesn't go up enough, people bitch. So what we need to understand here is that people are in a perpetual state of bitching about XRP. But that's because they're procrastinating on learning more. Once you understand what you own, you'll be able to multiply your profits for the next cycle. And I can't stress this enough. The record low sentiment in this community is a bullish indicator, and it makes the charts look more sexy every single day. XRP is dead in a scam. The foot of negativity is getting louder every day. Remember what I always said, the bottom won't feel like the bottom. The reason for this is because the sentiment will persuade you that it's dead, that you should move on. In November 2022, FTX was going to bring down Coinbase, Binance, Crypto.com, and many other exchanges. This was peak fear. And then soon after, the crypto market erupted. When it comes to XRP, it is and never will be easy to hold. It's because of times like this. Prominent names flipping bearish. FUD flooding the streets. And everyone has given up on the idea that it will ever make new old time eyes again. This chart below is the XRP Bitcoin price chart. And as you can see, it is basically a free fall. This to me is an absolute bullish indicator for the future of XRP price action, especially relative to Bitcoin. 
And remember when I tell all of you, I believe this March, April could be the beginning of our upwards XRP uptrend. We're getting closer and closer to a breakthrough every single day. And because it's an election year, we're going to dive into what happens if we switch presidents in regards to the crypto space. But specifically in regards to XRP, as people believe Ripple and XRP have extremely close ties to Trump in some way. I'm going to break that down for you. But first, let me make myself very clear. The S&P 500 has closed above the 5,000 mark for the first time ever. And we are at all-time highs with the stock market as at the exact same time. We are at peak levels from the Bitcoin ETF news. What do you guys think this means? I'll let you know right now that on this football Sunday, as the Super Bowl is going on, and as one of the distractions that I keep warning about is happening, meant to take your attention away from the actual important things in the world. We need to realize something important. I've seen both presidents, both Biden and Trump, and what occurs during presidencies is stagnation in crypto. But during elections and into political transition, we see unbelievable growth for alternative risk on assets. This has coincided with rate cuts, inflation. Pay attention to the macro, everyone. Because while everyone and their mom will be looking at the Super Bowl, these political changes are a time of opportunity. More elections are going on right now than at any other given time in history. And with all of this going on, I believe it's only fitting that we give the United States to Taylor Swift. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, of course, this is the transition we need. And just imagine when Travis Kelsey inevitably breaks up with her. Her revenge tour while in office will be the cherry on top for the end of the American empire. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, in all seriousness, what this video is about is about people's perspective on different presidential candidates in regards to crypto. And let me remind you that Donald Trump came out the other day talking about CBDCs and AI being dangerous, quote unquote. Republicans will take the stand of being anti-CBDC and more pro-Bitcoin, while Democrats will be more anti-crypto, like Elizabeth Warren, and more pro-CBDC. I am not sure what that means for XRP either way, because XRP is pro-crypto but also pro CBDC and I can find ways for it to have positives and negatives during both administrations. But in my personal opinion, XRP is going to do very well, phenomenally well actually, during this transition period between administrations, whether it's a continuation of the current Biden administration or a transition does not matter. The transition is where the opportunity is. And that's what I have to stress. Crypto and XRP have performed pretty bad, actually, during both administrations. And that's the point I want to hammer home. Transition is where the opportunity is. I hope that is inculcated into your minds and procrastinating on your goals in 2024 will be the last opportunity that you'll have had to be able to take advantage of the fourth industrial revolution. I believe they're going to close the gates on upward mobility in the world economy after this year. Just call that my spidey senses tingling. And if you aren't already bought into the new 1%, you will get left behind. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave you all on this Super Bowl Sunday and remind you 
You're winning the lottery in slow motion. And regardless of what anyone tells you, do not give up. Do not give in. All the signs are still pointing in our direction. Nobody can sue us and stop us now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable bull here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Our tips will ruin you. If you want to be a successful investor, be boring. Please get some experience and please focus on what you already know. Don't listen to hot tips. We're all going to be down at the bar on Saturday. And I promise you, at least 10 people are going to come over and say, you know, let me tell you about this company. Let me tell you about this stock. It is going to go through the roof. It is the best thing since sliced bread. You should buy this stock. And if you don't listen to him, don't worry. Someone else will come over and give you a hot tip. Please ignore them. It is not a good sign when you go to the dentist and the receptionist talks, he wants to talk to you about stocks. Don't get excited when everybody's excited. And please, if everybody's depressed, you should get excited. Emotions do usually do not help when you're trying to make investment decisions. We're all human beings and we all have emotions, which can be a negative. Being cold-blooded and heartless can be useful if you are going to be a successful investor. Everybody should learn to only invest in what you yourself know a lot about. Don't listen to other people. Don't listen to hot tips. I mean, everybody watching this knows a lot about something. Fashion, sports, cars, something. And that's where you should focus. If I told you you only had 25 investments in your lifetime, you would be careful. You wouldn't jump in and out. Every time you heard a hot story, you wouldn't invest. You would be very careful and you would be successful. I know everybody thinks this is easy. It's never been easy for me. So please focus, concentrate, be disciplined, and wait until you find a good opportunity yourself. People will say, oh, that's boring. Be boring. If you want to be a successful investor, be boring. Diversification is not going to make you rich. Diversification is something that brokers came up with to protect themselves. <laughs> so you, they won't sue you. And if they sue you, they won't win because you're diversified. If you want to get rich, you focus. You put all of your eggs in one basket. You better be sure it's the right basket. And you better watch that basket very, very closely. But that's how you get rich. Henry Ford didn't diversify. Thomas Watson didn't diversify. These guys put all their eggs in the right basket and got very rich. There's the problem with success is you think you know what you're doing. You think you're smart. You get cocky. You get arrogant. I learn more from my mistakes than I do from my successes.